Welcome to another video on fluid mechanics. In this video, we're going to be talking about the property of viscosity. So viscosity really, re really refers to the resistance of the fluid to move. So resistance to fluid motion is the best definition that I can come up with. Or resistance to flow. So basically, the more viscous a fluid is, the more resistance it is going to put against flow and the harder it is for it to actually travel or be transported from one place to another. And a, and a very good example of a viscous fluid, a very viscous fluid, is honey. Because you know that if you have a jar of honey, it's a really bad jar, but you can imagine that you have something like, um, you, you're trying to take it out, and then honey is just going to try to seep through, it's going to try and fall, but you'll notice that it will do so very slowly. And that's mainly because the high viscosity it has means that there's a lot of um, uh, tension in the surface, there's a lot of forces acting on it. That means that the displacement between the, the molecules is going to be very slow. So that's why honey tends to have such um, interesting properties. So. And another example of viscosity, which would be low viscosity, is water, because you know that water can fall and flow very easily. So that's the ma basic definition between them. And what is viscosity? Where does it come from, really? Because it's a really weird thing. Well, you can imagine that, let's say you have two plates. Let's say you have something like a solid base. Now, let's say that you have some kind of fluid. those are the fluid molecules, it could be a liquid or a gas and then you're gonna have another plate on the top and let's say you exert some kind of force, you try to you move this plate towards the right how do you think the fluid is gonna move here? do you think it's going to move all at the same time? well remember that in a fluid like a liquid or a gas the molecules are not strongly bound together as they do in solids so it makes sense that the, the molecules are going to try to adhere to these surfaces, which means that the, the molecules that are closer to the surface here at the top, which is the one that is moving, are going to move first, and then they're going to be followed by the molecules that go in the bottom layers. So in the end, what you're going to end up looking at is going to be something like this. You're going to have your plate still moving, but your fluid is actually going to be displaced in little layers, like these very thin layers, almost infinitesimal, or basically in the, within the same scale as the molecules that compose it. So you're going to have something like this. So each of these layers represents a layer of fluid, and you can imagine that that's something like an infinitesimal width or height. So basically what this means is that the fluid at the top closer to the plate that is moving, it's going to be moving a lot faster than the bottom. So the velocity is going to have a profile that looks parabolic. You're going to have something like a parabolic profile. So if, if this is our y-axis, then that means that this is going to be our u-axis, and our u-axis is just going to basically be this. So velocity profile is going to be a lot faster, closer to the surface that is moving. So this is just how we define viscosity, it's just the way in which a fluid would normally move is not really as a whole but rather as a series of infinitesimal layers and basically the ones that are closer to the part of the, of the system that is moving are going to tend to have a higher velocity. The same can be said for something like fluid in a pipe, let's say we have a pipe and then we have water inside of it. Well, how do you think the water is actually going? Because obviously the, the water closer to the walls is going to tend to adhere to the walls. So obviously in the center, we're going to have the higher velocity. So this is also going to look sort of parabolic. So basically because this to um, whatever column of fluid is closer to the wall, we're going to have less motion on those and more motion in uh, towards the center because that's where the le least resistance is. Here we have some sort of 
friction with the pipe whereas here we have a layer of fluid that only has resistance basically only has friction between two other fluid layers so basically this is going to be the profile of a, of a real fluid in a pipe so that's basically the basic definition between behind, behind that um, viscosity property. Now, in a more formal way, we can essentially describe viscosity as being part of something called the shear stress. And if you have done any statics or solid mechanics before, you know that the shear stress refers to the stress that results from um, transverse planes basically moving past each other. So this is going to be equal to the limit as a small portion of area goes to zero on the following rational relation. So we have a change in the force over a change in the area of the fluid. So basically this is just going to be a differential. DF over DA, that's how we define the infinitesimal change in, um, in the shear stress. And basically what this means is that if we have something like this, let's say this is an infinitesimal area of fluid, and then we have some shear stress that results from that, then what's going to happen due to these stresses happening at the, at the perimeter or at the surface of that little section of volume, we're going to end up with a displacement that is going to look something like this. So basically our... our our little column or our little infinitesimal volume is going to end up looking like this. So we're going to have a little displacement in the x direction, which, which we call delta x. And then this is going to sustain some angle, which we're going to call delta alpha. And basically, this is just going to be the shear strain. So from the shear stress, we derive the relationship for shear strain. And because this is happening at a very, very small scale, we can almost assume that the angle is going to be very small, which allows us to use the following approximation, tan delta alpha, which is going to be equal to delta x over delta y. So that's going to be that. And now we can actually develop another relationship from this, because we know that well, what's going to be this distance um, dependent on? We have a, an infinitesimal velocity happening here. So we have, let's say we have something like a change in velocity between the, between the uh, layers of fluid. And then that's going to happen within a specific interval of time. And if you look at this expression, you know that that's going to be equal to displacement. So the displacement here is just going to be equal to these two things. So what we can do now is we can uh, derive the following relationship. We have delta alpha over delta t equals to delta u over delta y. And all I did here was rearrange this. So basically I moved the delta t to uh, the de denominator of this expression. And now if we let delta t go to zero, that means that that's going to become an infinitesimal change in time then both expressions are essentially going to become infinitesimal, so we're going to have derivatives dt equals to du over dy and using this definition we can now define the shear stress in terms of another property which we will call the dynamic viscosity so this is going to lead to the next definition of shear stress which is going to be mu times the velocity gradient, which is going to be du over dy. Now this might seem a little bit strange, but essentially this uh, letter here represents viscosity. The full name actually is dynamic viscosity, because there's another type of viscosity that we'll look at shortly that is called kinematic viscosity, and there isn't really a, a very large difference between them, but this one is the main one that we use for analysis. So this is viscosity. And viscosity usually has units of newtons per times second per meter squared. So those are the units of viscosity that we're going to be using. So what this means is that we're going to have a something that is called a Newtonian fluid, 
So basically, if we plot the shear stress against the velocity profile, or the velocity gradient, we should get a straight line. And the gradient of that is going to be the viscosity. So this is what we call a Newtonian fluid, because it follows this type of um, assumption here that we just did, the, the small angle assumption on the shear strain. And this is called Newton's law of fluid um, forces, or fluid motion. So, or Newton's law of viscosity, actually. This is Newton's law of viscosity. That's what it's called. So Newtonian fluid. <laughs> We also have fluids that are non-Newtonian, which means that they don't precisely follow this relationship. So in those cases, we might get curves that are non-linear, something like those two. And in that case, the, the viscosity is not going to be represented in terms of this equation. It's going to be something a lot more complicated. So we can also have non-Newtonian fluids. So... What we're going to be doing now is um, I'm going to look at some of the properties, some of the effects of other properties like temperature on the viscosity. So viscosity actually changes with respect to uh, the temperature that the fluid is in. And basically, according to the type of fluid, if we have a liquid, it has been found empirically that the viscosity turns, tends to follow something called Andrade's equation. Andrade's equation. And it is basically this. So we have mu equals to b e to the c over t. And b and c are constants. In the case of a gas, we're going to have something called the Sutherland equation. And in that case, we're going to have viscosity follow the following relationship. So these are em empirical relationships that have been found through experiments. So t to the power 3 on 2 over t plus c. And once again, b and c are just arbitrary constants. Now, the last thing we need to talk about is, of course, dynamic viscosity, which is usually represented by this Greek letter. And it is just the ratio of the dynamic viscosity to the density of the fluid, which has units of meter square per second. Now, this might seem a little bit strange, but in general, uh, we use dynamic viscosity instead of this. This is just a ratio of the viscosity to the density. It might be useful in some analysis, but this is the real definition of viscosity. And the final thing I want to talk about in this video is how do we actually measure the viscosity of a fluid? Well, that's, um, it, there's actually a very ingenious way of doing it. It's actually quite simple. There's something called a rotational viscometer, which looks a little bit like this. We have a cylindrical drum, and then outside of that, we're going to place the fluid. So it's going to be contained like this. It's going to be a very thin layer. And just to differentiate, I'm just going to shade this area. And then that's going to be placed within another hollow cylinder. So basically, you can imagine that the contact between the surfaces is going to cause some friction between them. And then this cylinder at the top is going to be attached to some piece of string. And basically, we're going to rotate the outside cylinder at some angular speed omega. And as a result, what we're going to have, if I draw this more explicitly here. If I draw this more explicitly. And then we have the fluid between those two surfaces have the fluid here what's going to happen is we're going to have some shear stresses or originating from that motion so this one outside cell is going to move at omega which means that eventually the cylinder in between those two 
is going to move at some speed lower than this because remember that if we have some contact like this so if this is the fluid the profile is going to attempt to move a lot faster closer to the outside cylinder than, than, than inside so obviously this cylinder is going to rotate a lot slower than the outside and this string is going to generate some sort of uh, moment reaction or torque reaction m and basically what that's going to do is we're going to measure that rotational um, that torque reaction and we can, are going to calculate the viscosity of that fluid based on the following equation. So T here is going to be the thickness of the fluid. So the thickness of the fluid layer. And this is going to be placed on top of 2 pi omega r square of the inner radius. So this is going to be the inner radius, the one of the cylinder in between. And outer radius is going to be the one that um, reaches the wall of the outer cylinder. So that's going to be R naught and times H, which is just the height here. So basically, this is going to be the formula that allows us allows us to calculate um, the viscosity of that fluid, and this is called a rotational viscometer. So this is usually what we use for measuring viscosity, and it's a really important thing that we need to do because this cause is actually a really important property of fluids. And in the next video, we're actually going to go through some examples that show how to use these concepts of shear stress to uh, solve some problems in fluids.